Hello, this is Ed Tyson from MMA Collector. Every week I will bring in a new piece of memorabilia for my personal collection and even bring in a few collector friends with some of theirs. Our goal is to raise awareness of MMA memorabilia collecting and discuss the historical people and fights that made this sport what it is today. Join me now while we take a stroll down memorabilia lane. Now we are going to show what looks like a small trophy from Pride Bushido, but these trophies symbolize so much more. Once again, my hat's off to Japan's fight culture as any of the trophies they handed out now are one-of-a-kind items. From Pride to K1 to Dream, most big Japanese events did not issue belts often, but they gave out trophies to the winners of each fight. The main difference between winning in Pride and winning in UFC is that with Pride, they gave you a trophy. So not only did you get your hand raised, but you received a nice little memento, a trophy of uh, the fight that you just won. So it brought a nice little conclusion to the hard work that you put in to win this fight. Today we have the trophy from Bushido 3. And this trophy was actually won by Daiju Takasi over his victory over Carlos Newton. I kind of think, though, that I'm holding Carlos Newton's trophy here because I kind of think he won that fight. <laughs> you know, and if you watch that fight on Fight Pass or something, I think you'd agree. For sure. And that might be, you know, why Takase, you know, let the trophy go or sold it or or whatever because, you know, Sometimes the Japanese have a little, you know, their own twist on honor. And if he felt he didn't win it either, you know, that might be why the trophy is available because this is rare stuff. And this looks like a little trophy or, you know, not much kind of thing. But at the end of the day, yeah. Bushido 3, there were 10 fights. There are 10 of these in the world. And that's it. That's it. You know, you can make more if you want to make replicas and things. But the original you know, like the collector's choice kind of thing that you get from these trophies and the uniqueness of it is what makes them, you know, a real work of art on the part of the Japanese. Even the ones like this, which aren't extremely elaborate. Like if you look at Hoyler Gracie's Pride 2 trophy, it's very elaborate. You know what I mean? Here it was toned down a little bit, but again, the winners all got something to go home with. And, you know, that that's memorabilia. Unique stuff, not cookie cutter stuff where, you know, we made 200 of these and forced the fighter to sign them and distribute them. You know, these are real unique pieces. So unbelievable to show this at, you know, beautiful trophy too. I like it. It's unique. The trophies change across events and time with some very elaborate and some very simple. There were glass etchings, more typical trophies, but each one is unique and now rare for collectors to find. It sure is. You know, I do think, Bushido number three wasn't the only Bushido that they did distribute this particular trophy. I did see it in other events, so there may be a few more out there. But, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, Bushido number three only had ten of these, you know, for that event itself. But, yeah, uh, the, no, the, it's kind of an interesting little, you know, trophy for sure. I, it, it's unique. And with I the like plaque on them, every, every piece is unique, even if another – you know, Bushido 4 and 5, the trophies were very similar, you get into a situation where, you know, they aren't exactly the same because the plaques are different. And again, you're talking about unique. You can track them. This one is here. This collector has this one. The fighters still have this one. Some could be lost, you know, in fire or, you know, divorce and who knows, whatever. So, you know, there's a finite number of these. This is, to me, you know, when you consider boxing memorabilia as well the boxing memorabilia has many more years and they talk about silks and things like that which are their old posters made of silk that are very rare now they know their old what they know what's out there and the collectors you know exchange them and stuff but there's a finite amount those are the holy grail of boxing stuff because they're unique they're not cookie cutter stuff even the old like boxing cards and the smoker cards and things like that there were a lot of them made there are that collections do exist and stuff what is the yeah. holy grail for fighters and collectors of any combat are one the fight worn stuff when the fighter actually wore the stuff and then two the trophies and belts and pride has given us a treasure trove here through, you know, the trophy. And here we have the, the example from Bushido. Awesome piece, Ed. Yeah, and uh, the interesting part of this was I had an op opportunity to buy this particular trophy maybe 10 years ago. 
And at the time, I just wasn't really into trophies. I'm more of a fight-worn guy. But, you know, I, I always kind of regretted not buying it. So later, about maybe seven or eight years after that, somebody that bought it from the guy that I could have bought it from had purchased it and offered it to me. He was actually just about to sell it to a Japanese collector. And uh, he offered it to me before doing that, which I'm – very happy that he did, and I was able to secure it and keep it here in the States. Yeah, no, I, I think that's important, too, because, you know, we talk about unique, and, you know, there are Americans and Europeans, but Americans that won trophies in those shows. So some of those you are probably here, but many aren't. Many aren't. And this is one that an Asian fighter won, you know, a Japanese fighter won. So to be able to get it over, you know, to display here in any way, that you know, hopefully eventually in a museum, right? It becomes yeah. a real worthy piece. It becomes a piece that, you know, that comes with history and, and more of it after the fight. You know, the, the, the history of the collection becomes very interesting as well. So just... Just dynamic getting into the trophies, Ed. Thank you very much for showing that. Next week, we look at the MMA cultural phenomenon known as Tap Out. If you enjoyed our video, take a moment to like and share. And subscribe to the MMA Collector on YouTube and join our Collector community.